All right. Hello, this is Mr. O'Brien, and this is me reading pages uh, one to two. All right. So again, this is the Dr. Tower's Amazing Amazing Magic Lantern Show Viewer's Guide, page one. Who was Dr. Tower? He was a real person, by the way. All right. At the end of the Civil War, a freed slave and Baptist minister named J.W. Tower traveled the South, holding public meetings of men and women recently freed from slavery. Historical documents show that these meetings featured a magic lantern show, which is like a projector, entitled, quote, The Progress of Reconstruction, uh, close quote, which illustrated the enormous changes then taking place in the South during Reconstruction. Dr. Tower's journey took place in the Reconstruction years 1865 to 77, when Americans grappled with the effects of the Civil War and emancipation. It's important to remember those years, 65 to 77 as the Reconstruction years. With slavery dead, the social and economic foundations of Southern society had to be rebuilt. It was potentially a revolutionary moment full of fear and promise. Its outcome would shape the lives of Black Americans, indeed the lives of all Americans, for generations to come. Next paragraph. Dr. Tower's amazing magic lantern show creates characters for Dr. To Dr. Tower's touring company. Noah Brave, Marley Green, and the contentious Mr. Jones, who help us to imagine what his show might have been like. And it provides a unique look at the Civil War and Reconstruction from the point of view of the freed slaves. And just so you know, Mr. Jones will be a, a northern uh, free black, so someone who was free before the war, uh, who's uh, moved down south during the Reconstruction to help out with reform efforts. And throughout the film, you will see uh, Mr. Jones and Dr. Tower, um not really, they don't really dislike each other, but you'll see them uh, disagreeing about certain things every now and again. They see things a little differently. All right, page two, who makes history? When most people say history, they think of the deeds of important men, such as presidents and generals, and the dates of big battles. But history is also the story of ordinary men and women, such as the freed slaves, the way they lived, worked, and helped shape, uh, helped shape American society. Remember, we are all historical agents. We all make history. For many years, historians saw Reconstruction as the story of defeated gallant Southerners plagued by Yankee carpetbaggers who punished the South and enriched themselves. So much like the, the story of the Civil War used to be reversed, all right, and, and the Confederates, like these noble warriors, uh, we're fighting a lost cause. Reconstruction was kind of thought of in reverse also. All right. Where uh, northern Republicans who went down south to help out the freed slaves were derogatorily called carpetbaggers, which is like a suitcase. Uh, they were derogatorily call called carpetbaggers uh, by southern whites. All right. You can see th this kind of um, negative portrayal of carpetbaggers in the movie Gone with the Wind. If you ever see if you've ever seen that movie or will see that movie. Um, they portray Northern Republicans down South as, as in a negative light in that movie. But in the 60s, reading on, uh, historians began to change their views. Guys like Foner, for example. In the new revisionist texts, the Ku Klux Klan and other supporters of white supremacy were now the villains. And Yankee Republicans became the heroes of Reconstruction. We'll talk more about that eventually. Neither traditionalists nor revisionists. So traditionalists were the historians who saw Reconstruction um, the old way, all right, where the white South were the victims of Reconstruction. You know, these evil, nasty Republicans out just have to just too, too severely punish the South, and they were overly vindictive. Vindictive, right? Those are the traditionalists, the historians who saw it that way. The revisionists were the ones who flipped it around. All right, uh, the phonotypes. Um, neither traditionalists nor revisionists paid much attention to the actions of the freed slaves. That does not include Foner. In the old view, freed slaves were seen as ignorant, childlike creatures, led into corruption and violence by the carpetbaggers. In the revised approach, they were seen as innocent, passive victims of Southern white injustice. Basically, they had no agency in either story. Now, kind of like a second wave of revisionist historians, this is more the Foner wave, uh, now historians are asking new questions, which reveal that freed slaves played a more active part in Reconstruction. And you can see that reflected in the way we've done the Civil War so far, right? 
you know, we've, we've made it a point to emphasize the million slaves that ran away and the quarter million that fought in the war and so on and so forth. Based on this new scholarship, Dr. Tower's amazing Magic Lantern Show can help us see the ways black men and women struggled to overcome the legacy of slavery and create independent lives for themselves and how in doing so they affected the course of American history. So now get back to the video.